so considering this the first tool that we will be considering is called a unigram language model so in the unigram language model the terms are basically randomly drawn from the document exactly like the way that we have discussed here with replacement so let's say this is the document containing nine terms basically three unique terms red blue and yellow so what is the probability of generating this sequence from this document following a unigram language model it will be basically independent of each other so it will be basically <laughs> the probability of drawing the individual words one after the other so it will be something like this so this language model is called unigram because we estimate or basically we can say we predict the likelihood of each word independently from each other so we are not actually considering that we have already drawn a red ball what is the probability of drawing a red ball again or in an other word if i already have drawn the word hong what is the probability of we will be able to uh, draw a term which will be kong this is not actually considered in unigram language model so in unigram language model we will be basically considering each terms uniquely or as unique for so for example here is an example so basically the probability of seeing the term tendulkar is the same even if the previously word, sample word is sachin which we can i mean if we consider a uh, news collection it is highly likely that a document containing the term tendulkar will be also containing the term sachin <laughs> so i hope you can already understand the limitation of unigram language model like this kind of this independence is not actually true always to work on this kind of a situation we can consider higher gram language model in general we can call this as n gram language model when for unigram we are basically considering n equals to 1 we can consider a bigram language model or trigram language model as well what are they i hope from the discussion on uh, nlp you can remember that but still let me discuss this let's say a document is containing terms a b c d e f let's say this in a unigram language model all the individual words will be considered as separate entities for bigram language model what we will be doing is we will be considering ab bc cd de and ef this is called basically the bigram language model so all consecutive words are considered together once and it's moving window <clears throat> so this is basically the in this case the vocabulary will be containing a b c d e f in this case considering a bigram language model it will be considering a b as a vocabulary term b c c d d e e f now in some so again let me complete this and i'll be discussing that so for trigram it is basically three as i hope you can understand it will be basically a b c b c d uh, c d e and d e f these are the four terms which will be indexed basically these are the four terms which will be considered now considering a phrase i hope you can understand that this is the correct way to go ahead but essentially uh, 
practically it has been seen that it is good to keep the unigram language model and if you need some form of uh, phrasing we can actually club unigram language model with the bigram language model that is we will be so given this document we will be making the inverted index for all the, so basically is associated with all the words all the individual words as well as their bigrams so all together there will be 11 terms a b c d e f that is 6 and a b b c c d d e f that is 5 all together there will be 11 entities associated with the index of this document this is actually this higher form by ground trigram is actually works better for applications such as speech recognition or automatic language translation. So why <coughs> excuse me I hope you can understand why it is I mean uh, necessary or why it is applicable for language translation. So for language translation I hope you can understand that in a language, if I want to translate an English uh, sentence to a German sentence, in the English sentence, it will be having certain form of, say, ordering or certain uh, uh, grammar that will be following. So it is in English. Good morning. So. If I want to translate, instead of keeping good and morning separately, we can also consider them together. Why? Because in some German text, you will be finding that good is kept as good. In some German, you will be finding that it is considered as guten. And this guten is more associated with morning, in which case it is basically considered as morgan. Guten morgan. So in these cases, if we consider good as it is, then it might be the case that good will be translated into good, not guten. And also another thing is for speech recognition or for speech to text conversion, we know that given a correctly spoken speech, it is highly likely that the person who is, I mean, who is making the speech is uh, following certain grammar. And let's say he is, he had said this word, say A, B, C, then he had said something which is basically was, I mean, due to the recording, it is actually transformed into something noisy. So following the grammar, we can actually, it might be the case that we will be able to predict this word. So let's say it will be D. So this for, for the speech to text recognition as well, it is better to keep the higher order models or uh, higher gram language models but in information retrieval we will be following the simple unigram language model which is essentially equivalent to considering a simple bag of word model with individual words as token so so that's it up to today's class.